Erev Tov, Chavarim, my name is Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. No smoking gun. Smack in the face for May as EU fails to back British escalation over the Scripple case there. Uh, we're going to be looking at several issues tonight uh, on, on, on multiple fronts, including uh, the situation over in Syria, different parts there. Uh, and also this neo-Nazism that uh, R Russia is compared to from the 19, what is it, 1936, 1938 Olympics. But first, so as we get into this, of course, that was uh, uh, Boris Johnson, the uh, MK member of the British Parliament there, our uh, MP member. Anyway, it says here that the UK was quick to point the blame for Salisbury attack, but its own allies are refusing to do the same. Reports suggest EU leaders gathering in Brussels are backing away from British attempts to condemn Moscow. After former double agent Sergei Skripal and his daughter, Yulia, were exposed to a, a 234 nerve agent, also known as Novichok, in Salisbury. UK Prime Minister Theresa May blamed Russia as Britain said it was highly likely to be a Kremlin-backed act of aggression despite repeated denials from Moscow. And from what I've been gathering as well, even President Trump has backed uh, backed up just a bit on that issue. I want to jump down here though. This is part of a video that was played there uh, uh, that RT put out about this issue. Let's look at a little bit of this that's going on here. It's called Toxic Terror, um, one of RT's broadcasts uh, that they spoke on the issue there. Let me get the volume up just a little bit, make sure we have everything okay, and let's listen into what they had to say here. Secretary's comparison of the upcoming World Cup hosted by Vladimir Putin to the 1936 Olympics under Hitler. Johnson was answering a question at the Commons Foreign Affairs Committee. Putin's going to use it the way Hitler used the 1936 Olympics. The idea of Putin handing over the World Cup to the captain of the winning team I'm afraid that that's me right. completely The right. idea of Putin using this as a PR exercise to also the good for corrupt regime for which he's responsible. Yes, I think the comparison with 1936 is is certainly right, and uh, I think it's a, an emetic prospect, frankly, for uh, to think of uh, uh, the, 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 the Putin glory in in uh, this 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 sporting event. The comments come over the diplomatic fauna. You know, it's kind of interesting that uh, Boris Johnson uses this type of rhetoric against Russia. Uh, comparing them to Nazi Germany under Adolf Hitler. And I say this mainly in light of what's been going on in Ukraine from the very beginning. If we look at the facts behind this, if anyone is more like a neo-Nazi government, there's a lot of other fingers that could be pointed to that. After all, of course, uh, Putin being able to host these games here is a little bit of a payback, I guess, for Russia being pretty much kicked out of the Olympics, although there were athletes that did get to participate at the last moment, but uh, were not allowed to use the Russian flag, etc. And all this was clearly more uh, of a political move than it was anything else. But let's take a look at some of the hard facts on this. This article here that come, come out recently on The Guardian, neo-Nazi groups recruit Britons to fight in Ukraine. Hmm, what about those neo-Nazis and uh, Adolf Hitler's 1936 Olympics? Britons are being recruited. And it only says here that only two men have traveled from the UK to the war-torn nation, but there's a lot of evidence that is to the contrary of that. We won't get so much into that at this particular point, but it says, Hope Not Hate Watchdog says the latest two men, uh, by the way, that was the latest two men, have traveled from the UK to a war-torn nation. Neo-Nazi groups involved in fighting in Ukraine are actively seeking to recruit British far-right activists, a leading anti-fascist watchdog has warned. At least two Britons are thought to have traveled to the war-torn Eastern Europe country in recent months after an encouragement by people linked to the Az Azov Battalion, a notorious Ukrainian fascist militia, according to the Hope Not Hate. Now, this is just very troubling indeed. And of course, we are seeing a rise in the Nazism in Ukraine. The SS 
appearing on their uh, shoulder patches, uh, the Ukrainian military that is fighting against the Eastern Ukrainians, and I still call them Ukrainians. They are Russian by descent, Russian nationals from the far east there, but they are fighting for their autonomy. And of course, yes, I do believe that there are Russian troops fighting right along with them. Uh, just like we've been backing up the Ukrainians. Maybe not necessarily in battlefield armor, but there has been Americans spotted there as well, wearing Ukrainian uniforms, fighting along with the Ukrainians. But moving on here, we have the Times of Israel, and this here is Lauder, who is the head of the Jewish World Jewish Congress, not to be confused with Knesset. Uh, I'm not very uh, fond of Mr. Lauder and his uh, relationship with the Vatican, where the World Jewish Congress really got sucked into that particular issue. We go into that in a separate broadcast. But anyway, the Times of Israel calls for Ukrainian priests to stop glorifying Nazis. World Jewish Congress asks uh, country's Orthodox Church to halt tributes to Hitler's army and its local collaborators. Well, Mr. Lauder has a very good point, if you ask me. The World Jewish Congress urged Ukrainian clergy to refrain from attending the neo-Nazi events. Moral authority is necessary to prevent any further rehabilitation of Nazism or the SS. World Jewish Congress President Ronald Lauder wrote in a letter Thursday to the head of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Falaret. Hmm, I wonder how that's going to fall on Vatican ears. Well, you know, maybe a few nice gestures will be made back uh, to Mr. Lauder. But you can count on one thing. They'll continue to bless the neo-Nazi soldiers that are fighting in Ukraine. And of course, those Britons that have been recruited to fight there as well will also get their Catholic Church's blessing. Because after all, this was at one time considered to be the soldiers for the Vatican. As Hitler himself said, I'm only carrying on what the Vatican started and did for nearly, nearly the last 2,000 years. Ah, another interesting uh, article came out as well on the commentarymagazine.com. Just going to read a little portion of this. It's how the Catholic Church sheltered Nazi war criminals. Just to show you some of the Vatican's involvement, which by the way, if you ever try to search for that, don't forget the Google head actually met with the Pope of Rome not too long ago. And when he did, very odd to see that it uh, wasn't long, maybe about six months or so, you couldn't find hardly any negative thing about the Vatican whatsoever at the top of searches any longer. In fact, some of the best journalists in the world had published articles how Pope Pius XII was very much involved with Adolf Hitler during his reign, and also that was all covered up. And now the articles that make the top of the Google search happen to be nothing but apologetics for all those things, the crimes that the Vatican had been accused of by uh, investigative journalists that have uncovered those truths from the Vatican's own archives. Very interesting, though, to see how that plays out. And yet, at the same time, they're out there ready to throw Prime Minister Netanyahu in jail because they said he collaborated with uh, Bezik in Israel. Well, what about the Pope of Rome, then? He is collaborating with Google to make sure he gets favorable coverage at the top of Google search engine ranks as well. Hmm. Find that interesting, don't you? As we move on, though, uh, Jerusalem Post here says here, we're going to go into another area. Well, if we get it to work right here, uh, let's see if it's going to work for us. I don't even know how we ended up at the bottom of the Jerusalem Post on this article right here. Uh, but anyway, here, the breaking article says White House Trump speaks with Turkey's Erdogan on shared concerns. Now, that's troubling for me to begin with because... Guess what? President Trump's still trying to do exactly what the deep state would like him to do. It's kind of interesting, though. You notice how the president actually uh, congratulates President Putin on his victory. Only three people were in the room. And of course, they didn't even want it. They didn't even want it to leak to the public that he did it. To a shame to admit. I guess that he liked Putin. Who knows? You know, I think the guys could really get along if you get the deep state out of the way. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Anyway, though, uh, President Trump says here, or says here, U.S. President Trump spoke with Turkish President uh, Tayyip Erdogan on Thursday about the importance of a strong bilateral relations. The White House said, with amid tensions over Turkey's military actions in parts of Kurdish-controlled northern Syria, the two leaders committed to continued efforts to intensify cooperation on shared strategic challenges and to address the concerns of both countries that affect the bilateral relations, the White House said in a statement. 
Well, Kurds, I hate to break it to you because I do have a heart for you as well, but it looks like once again, the White House has thrown you under the bus in favor of a stronger Turkish alliance. So they'll probably pull out their forces again inside of all Syria that are protecting the Kurds to begin with to allow you to be able to do all these evils that the Erdogan would like to do. Also, too, this was something that I've seen, and I just wanted to share this with you. It's a shock. This is on uh, Rus Syrian warriors. See how the people from eastern Ghouta meet Syrian soldiers. Peaceful residents fled from the terrorists and rejoice at the Syrian army. We've been seeing all types of reports to begin with about this particular uh, issue of the of these uh, the military. Excuse me, the civilians that have been coming in. Their reports we shared with them shared with you here on Israeli News Live the other day. Uh, how that the people talked about being held as uh, human shields for these jihadists uh, in Eastern Ghouta, which is kind of interesting because I saw another clip there where President Trump was uh, uh, alluding to the idea of wanting to pull out and not support jihadists. And yet we get just the opposite story when we watch the State Department or even Nikki Haley at the United Nations. Anyway, though, if this will play for us, let's just see if we can get it to play. We'll kind of refresh this page here. It's really heart-wrenching to watch. They, they, they see the Syrian soldiers as they're coming up, and then they will run uh, in, with excitement and jubilation in seeing these Syrian soldiers here, especially that one guy right there. You know, he's really, really seems to be excited about seeing them. Uh, some people may find that hard to believe in seeing something like that, but I guess if we were in their shoes living under the uh, conditions of what we've heard already described from some of the people that have come out of the Eastern Ghouta there under the... Uh, uh, under the heavy hand of the jihadists, not allowing them food and water, not allowing them to leave, shooting at them if they tried to leave, and then yet knowing the Syrian army was there all along trying to uh, get them liberated from these jihadists, I guess I would be happy as well. It's just like American soldiers. If we were caught in a situation in some other part of the world, how many times have American soldiers have come, uh, special forces, etc., to liberate those that were held captive? and the excitement and jubilation of the people to be free at last. And these Syrians are no different there. They are happy to be free at last, free from the terrorists of the jihadists, and happy to see Syrian soldiers, which only reminds me as well, and I didn't get a chance to share this with you. Uh, I was looking at a video where uh, President Bashar al-Assad driving himself in his own car to the front lines of East Ghouta, and when you see him meeting with the soldiers, uh, many of them surprised to even see him. Uh, these people are very happy to have him as their president. I also watched images of uh, Amsa, uh, his wife there, meeting with uh, women soldiers as well, fighting on behalf of Syria there in eastern Ghouta, and the love that they have for her as well as the First Lady. You know, totally different picture. And you know, many times I share with you guys that we have to remember that Syria is the mothers, or the mothers of Israel are all Syrians. And even the matriarch, Rebecca, also was a Syrian. She was the sister to Laban. Uh, so, so often we forget that we have a very close relationship with Syria uh, and their descendants. Now, I'm not in support of things such as, like in the case of Bashar al-Assad's father and the evils that he did to Israel in attacking the country, etc., but under Bashar al-Assad, until recently, when he shot down the Israeli F-16, Assad was not attacking Israel whatsoever. But you have to keep in mind, his country's been bombed so many times by Israeli forces there, and Russia has told him to hold back, not to retaliate, and uh, finally he did retaliate. I don't justify what President Assad did to Israel either, but... You know, it just comes a time, I suppose, that these type things happen. And it's not good on his part, and it's not good on Israel's part to be bombing Syrian military either. Uh, but it's not so much as Israel getting involved with Syria as it is the NATO-backed jihadists that are warring against this nation to topple this nation. And that's what's troubling. Uh, also, France moves to make 15 a legal age of consent for sex. This is like blows me away. Uh, we were already looking, and I'll come back to this in just a second, 
uh, the priest, police brutality. Uh, the protests that are happening because of the reforms that Macron is doing in France uh, and here in Paris, I mean, they are beating these people. I've seen some much worse videos already that are coming out of France uh, over this situation there. But um, it's just really troubling what's going on. Now, the reforms, and I'm sure the people are not protesting over this sexual age limit there because originally, from what I understand, there was no law, and so Macron's move here, in one way at least, sets a limit that can put offenders in prison for sexually assaulting uh, girls under the age of 15, whereas before they didn't have this type of law. Uh, and they had to, it, it had to be proven that these women were being raped, which was very unfortunate. But the only thing that really kind of troubles me, though, is that the idea that NPR reported here that they, they made the age 15, why not 18? Do you think a girl at 15 years old has got enough brains to, to make those types of decisions? I am very concerned that we are actually headed, that this law, even though it's being put out there, is more in line with that of the migrant situation that they have in the country and that it's headed more towards a Sharia acceptance in the European Union and France leading the way on that. Just have to wait to see how all that goes. But very troubling if you ask me. Uh, and looking at that. Also, one other bit of news there, friends, shared with me here on Facebook. God, forgive me, I can't remember who actually shared this with me. Reviving Biblical Wedding Customs in Preparation for the Third Temple. I'm always concerned about this Third Temple coming up because I do believe that there are powers in the world that are going to use it for the Antichrist himself. But, it doesn't mean that the Jewish people do not have at heart what they believe to be uh, something that is biblical that will happen and the desire for Jews to be able to pray once again on the Temple Mount is something that is at the forefront of their hearts. And I do realize it'll be also the advent of the coming of the true Messiah as well. Not just the Antichrist, but the true Messiah will as well come uh, once this temple has come together. So anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Also, if you've caught the broadcast earlier, can get, again, uh, Avi Lipkin's uh, his party has, has been finally approved, his Bible block party. He's been at this for 12 years now and trying to get this approved through the, through the Israeli Knesset. They have been approved. It will open the way for believers of Yeshua to actually become Knesset members. Uh, certainly that can be a good thing. And of course, I can see some dangers, not from Avi's standpoint at all, but uh, if we end up getting... Some Vatican members in there, that would be a danger in my opinion. I'm Stephen Benu, you're watching Israeli News Watch.